Okay, so now our EXR files have exported. So what we are going to do is pull them into After Effects to make them into the video and then we can start editing them for our visual effects. First thing I like to do is make sure that we're on 32 bits for our uh, resolution. So if not, we click on it and change our depth from 8 bits to 32 bits per channel. And it's going to use a lot more saturation and contrast. So what we need to do is get our EXR files, which should have saved to where you stated. Otherwise, it will be in the Maya default projects and images under render. You can see we've got all these EXR files. So to import this as a video, we need to double click the area there or right click import file. We're then going to go on to it. So I saved it in here. We select the first frame. It's really important that we do that. Make sure that sequence is ticked. Now I have to create composition. Then we import and press OK. And it should import all of the XR files that make up that composition. The bottom one with the multiple images like that. We then left click and drag down. So mine started with nothing on the shot, that's why it's black. So I would like to press space and let it render the whole footage. So it may take some time, but that's all I have on mine. Now you may notice that it doesn't look quite right and not the same as when you saw the render view on Maya. That's because the gamma's been thrown off, but we're going to fix that. So mine's just finished and the ship flies past pretty quickly. Because I rendered in 24 frames per second, I also need to change my composition. So here, we right click, Composition Settings, and I'm going to change to 24 frames per second, and press OK. Again, it may have to render back through. So for this, I'm going to get a frame with the ship on, so I can see what I'm doing, and I recommend the same for yourselves. I'm going to rename this to Beauty because we're going to use this as a reference. It has all our AOVs on and none have any extra effects on. So it's a really good one to reference. We're then going to use Control V to duplicate. And on this second one, we're now going to add an effect. So under the effects panel, when it loads, we're going to search for extractor. which is this one. We make sure we've selected the layer and then we double click that and it will apply it. Now you notice how it's suddenly gamma corrected. It may overdo it, but that's fine. We're going to adjust. So that's our beauty with no extractor on. And this is the beauty with extractor on, a big difference. What we now need to do is do a new layer for every single AOV that we did. So we need one for ambient occlusion. Control B to select the layer. Control D. We're going to do one for albedo. Control D. Denoise albedo. Control D. Diffuse. Control D. Diffuse direct. Control D. Diffuse indirect. Control D. Emission. Control D, Specular. Now I recommend that you rename all these so then you don't get lost. Now, we need to make sure, firstly, the ambient occlusion is right at the top. All we need to do is press toggle switches slash modes, and this is going to let us change the modes for each layer. Now, ambient occlusion is going to have a multiply mode. So we want to multiply the ambient occlusion on all the layers. Now, I personally like to use the albedo as a root. So we're going to make sure that that's down there. Now, the denoise of albedo and albedo will be slightly different. And it's up to you which one you want to choose. So this one is a denoise albedo. And this is a standard albedo. Notice so there's a little bit of difference in terms of the lighting. I like to keep both at the bottom and then 
change which one I'm going to use once I've got all the other layers set up. So now, on the specular, I'm going to change that to add. Emission, also add. Diffuse indirect, to add. Diffuse direct, to add. The diffuse, which is a combination of the both, I'm going to leave off for now and hide that. So now, you can see this changed the scene a lot more. If we look at our beauty again, this is the beauty. And this is our, all our layers set out. Now again, if we use the albedo as a base, it changes how this spaceship looks compared to using the denoise albedo. But I'm happy to keep it like that. So I'm going to get rid of the standard albedo and keep the denoise as my base. Now you may be wondering why we've done the AOVs. Now, the AOVs as exported as layers, so then you have ultimate control of reds and all of them. Now an example for this is the emission. You may not be happy with the emission on your object. So what we can do is now actually edit and apply effects to that layer. So under the effects, go ahead and change the levels. So search, double click to apply the effect. Now I think I might pull the emission down a little bit on the levels. Now, if we go too far, it's that was whitewashing the whole ship. And if we go too far, the other way it gets rid of it. So I want to do it a little bit. So it looks a little brighter, but it's washed it out. So now, I can put a saturation on. Double click. And put the saturation up. So now, we have a lot better levels, a lot better emission, but we've not lost as saturation and this is the reason that we do the AOVs ultimate control over every single one that we've emitted so with the emission turned off or rather looking at the beauty itself this is what the beauty is and that's with the emission pumped up on the AOV layers now it's entirely up to you what effects you place but experiment and have a mess